car build's finally happening. It's all coming together. And it's probably going to explode because we're reusing the crank and bearings. Nah, it should be right. Yeah, they're fine. So apparently, rings on the pistons first, which look very pretty. So people who don't know, like this is the piston, yeah, that goes up and down on this thing inside of this. And the way it doesn't leak out or like, you, know, you want to send all the power downwards. These are like squeegees. Like yeah. metal squeegees. Sure. One of them contains the air and the pressure, and then one is what catches the oil because it needs to be lubricated, otherwise it'll melt. It needs the coat with oil and then try and take it all back again. But a little bit's left over that gets burnt and sent out. Is that right? Yeah. Yay! But yeah, that's like the first step here is to put these rings on the pistons. You notice there's multiple grooves and they got to go on in a specific order. So there's three rings to go into yeah, the bottom Yeah, the, the bottom one's a sandwich. Yeah, I've just put one in. The next one, these ones are really easy to put in. <laughs> this is so complicated. Why is this squiggly? That wouldn't seal for nothing. It's it's a, a spring, basically. It's, it's, to oh. hold the other, it's to hold these rings out. Oh, that makes sense. So it doesn't seal, that's just... Yeah, it doesn't seal. Oh. So this is the oil ring. It scrapes the oil back down. Oh, right. So when you see smoky magnets, it's that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's all of them, but that one's the main one. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Uh, behold, uh, all these new tools, but no feeler gauges. So we're using these feeler gauges. It's just the precisely thick piece of metal that gets scraped along things and make sure it's the right thickness. Rust doesn't expand metals, does it? No, of course uh, not. Dirt's no, great for engines just, too. Just give them a clean and this is what, this is the standard that this <laughs> engine's been built to. It's 11th hour, so the gap's big enough. Huh, matches your, your Batman shirt. Mm. It means it won't stain it, right? Yeah, so like this is the crankshaft, which is literally what the pistons connect to and which what literally connects to the transmission and drives the wheels. It all goes through this first, basically. And all these bearings and caps, I mean, that's an engine bearing. That's it, like no rolly bits in it or anything. It's, it's crazy, it all just floats on oil pressure, right? But you can't mix them up, like they're mated to each other. They've worn grooves into each other that fit and you gotta put it back the same. So many stupid little metal bits that are meant to rub together and not die at thousands of RPM for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, so James is playing bearing investigator here because, because like uh, he, uh, I mean, did I say we're gonna get new bearings and then change my mind? Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, well it's my fault, but James is fixing it. But it's like, he laid, but then why'd you label these? I labeled them afterwards. Oh, how'd you know? I did some forensic before. Oh gosh. <laughs> He's like lining up the wear marks like an investigator with a bullet from a victim in the barrel of a gun, basically. Yeah, it's the same thing. Kiss at home. So for these bits, you can't just tighten them up as tight as you want. Like you gotta follow the recipe book and use a torque wrench that tells you exactly how much force you're putting onto it. <laughs> oh well. Taking it apart to see what I did wrong. I've seen people when they build a motor, they think that if the engine's tight to turn, it's a good thing, it means it's gonna have high oil pressure. Realistically, it probably means you've done something wrong. Nice. This is my favorite bit. Look at this balance shaft. I'm guessing take vibrations out or something. Mm. It's a shame, part of me wonders if we can just run it without it and then see what it's like, but I'm guessing we shouldn't kill the motor. Insert the dingle dongle stick. You're in the dark, but there's dots. The dingle dots. This part's boring. Rear main seal. This cheap little piece of rubber is responsible for some of the worst oil leaks in some people's cars. And there, can't wait for that to drip. This is the oil pump. This is where all the oil gets collected into it. You know, so when you run out of oil, this is the thing that starves out.
hope I'm ready to put this on now. Well, you're doing it, so that means you're ready. Stomp gasket. This is a really modern one. Like, the original ones were like this, weren't they? Yep. Yeah, 1980s, they had to, they were all over it. This is also another fun leaking area and people try and do cheap fixes to try and stop it. There's a chunky gasket, that's proper. It's actually looking like a guy now. The little nug man's coming together. That's so cute. Three cylinders of happiness. Check out these lovely looking water hoses, but they're not new at all. No, James has told me that these are borderline hanging in there. Like, this this was cut short, right? Yeah, it used to be out to here, but it was just Swiss cheese. So <laughs> yeah, these are the scary bits where it's like, these bits are weird piping. Well, I guess they could be swapped for rubber at some point, but... Well, it's a press fit in here with an O-ring. That's barely hanging in as well, so I've caked that in silicon. Oh, good. And fingers crossed. Well, I'm glad this isn't a big pile of crap, man. So when the head got done, it already had the cam put in. The cam is the egg lobe looking thing that spins and pushes the valves that lets air in and exhaust out and all that sort of stuff. So all that's already been done, but it does have to be timed up to the crankshaft and the pistons. And if you get that wrong, you kill everything and start again. Repco actually had another water pump and the box that this was in was so dusty. Like they couldn't believe that someone had finally come in and bought it. And yet the timing kit as well, same thing. You see? It's been between two boxes for a long time. Yep, we're clearing out all the, all the shops. They love us. James found a date. 2007. <laughs> That's a long time. I was in school. Glad we changed the water pump as well because it sits behind the timing belt. You know that fun timing kit from uh, 2007? No, they, they gave us the wrong one. Uh, this has rounded teeth. No, that's okay. All right. Well, thanks for your help. So, James was on the phone forever. I think he made a new best friend as well. But the problem is that, see, these have rounded teeth, right? But the one we got, square ones. And the amount of teeth and like the holes and everything have to be perfect or else all this stuff smashes together in the engines. We can't take any risks. And I think James found one in New South Wales, which is being freighted over for next week. Where? But look, we're chaining it up and it's going up. It's going up. It's not attached yet. I'm still bolting it on. It's going up. All the V8 dudes laughing at this teeny meeny little wussy thing hanging on this. <laughs> Just needed two strong people to hold it up for us. And this is the flywheel that goes at the back of the motor. It also acts as like a big counterbalancey weight, doesn't it? Well, that's what a flywheel is. It gives the engine enough momentum to get from one stroke to the next. Yeah, and it also helps connect the gearbox to the motor. Well, yeah. This is the part that the clutch rubs up against. You'll see it in a bit. Ooh, this could be all asbestos dust. That's why I'm wetting it. Ew. This is fun to put on because it's hanging on a stand. We do have a genuine kit, but the issue being is that uh, the clutch material tends to be made out of asbestos. <laughs> so, you know, not too, not too keen on using that bit of it. Is that the asbestos? I'm gonna say that's the asbestos. Well, that's the we, can just, we don't need to open it then. No. I'm enjoying the, the party playset looking polka dots all over it. Everything's in Japanese, that's fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that one's good, that aftermarket one, but you know. This it's is a real one. It's always best to use the genuine ones. Yeah. Luckily, same day, found a modern clutch, not full of asbestos, so very lucky. Whenever you push on the pedal of like a manual gearbox, no one drives manual anymore. But what you're actually feeling is that guy rubbing up against these fingers. That's actually the spring that you push down. Like yeah, that's what pushes the pedal back. This is a genuine original one from way back. So the clutch pedal is gonna feel proper. You know, if you put a different clutch in, it feels different. Why aren't you using a clutch aligning tool? I don't need to. James says he doesn't need to. I have eyes. This is the best part of Nugget Cars, mate, is that that's the whole gearbox and you can just like huff it in there like a bag of potatoes and you just wash it really, really easily. Oh, it looks way better already as you coat me in stinking brake clean. 
Here's the old clutch. It is thrashed and gone and destroyed and literally wouldn't drive. The whole time that I owned it, you could barely get it to move and uh, that makes sense. Makes my life hard. <laughs> oh, you want me to hold the motor? Um. Well, uh, this is kind of it. <laughs> The, the timing belt thing really messed up everything and the amount of time it took to for James to find another one. You know, and keep in mind, uh, like, we only do this two days a week. Like, we have other gigs we've got to run to. But, like, it's together for the most part. Like, hopefully timing kit comes back in. New clutch and garbage, all that on there and things, mate. And, uh, you know, welcome to building cars where you order things months ago and you swear you've got all the parts you need to start an entire series and not break up every single week. And, and then, you know, parts are wrong and then here we are. How do you feel, James? Yes. 